bottom platform of the table is uh, veneered with uh, 30 degree wedges of walnut and uh, well, 30 degrees means it'll be 12 wedges to go around the entire circle. They have to be perfectly 30 degrees in order to fit. So I've cut them using a wedge template that I made, 30 degree wedge template. And that gives you a saw cut edge, but that's not good enough. You need to have a really perfectly smooth edge to have a really good joint on your veneer. So I've got this little jig that I've made up. It's used to clamp packs of veneer. It's just two pieces of uh, poplar with two strong backs bolted together. The strong backs have a slight bow to help clamp the center a little more tightly than the, than the edges. And I simply, help if I did this so I could see it, simply take the pack which I've taped together at the ends and carefully fit it in here. And then work it so it protrudes just a slight amount. You just want a little bit of protrusion so that you can use a block plane in this case because they're small pieces. Gorilla grip or anything like that. Just don't want it going anywhere. Put the vise and then take it down. Use a really sharp iron in your plane. Like I say, you can use a jack plane for larger pieces, but for these small pieces, the block plane is easier for me. Okay, so that one's good. Now you just take her out carefully. And we'll just put this through so we can get the other edge. So now I take my pack and picking up two slices. Go ahead and book match them. And then just go ahead and tape these all up just to see how it all fits. Alright, now let's go ahead and do a check with our straight edge. See if we got a straight edge along here, then we know we got our 30 degrees. Okay, so you slowly tape the, uh, the, the wedges together. I'm using veneer tape that's not perforated, it's, the, it's a little bit thicker stuff because uh, it get, gives me a lot of strength and I'm going to be using a, uh, an iron on, a heat lock glue that I'll place on the bottom and the ironing on the top and then later on when everything's uh, set I can take the tape off and it doesn't get in the way of the joint. So I use a, I'm using about four cross pieces per wedge and just applying it when this tape, uh, you know, I wet it in one of these uh, stamp liquor things. And when it uh, when it dries, it tends to pull together some and tighten up the joint a little bit, which is good. It's like making a wooden pizza. Okay. And I go ahead and take a long piece I've already cut, with the whole thing, go right on down a joint. So I decide that maybe it's not such a hot idea to have long pieces all crossed in the center because then I can't feel what's going on in the center. You know, when you're gluing this down, you're feeling these joints to see if any of them are popping up. You know, if, a, if it's starting to overlap itself like that because you need to have them all butt jointed. So I'm cutting these pieces into half size and I'm uh, 
running them from the outside right up to uh, about where the tape in the center is, but I'm not overlapping them too much. That way I can feel these joints, like right here, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling that I need to wiggle a little bit to get it to fuck. I think we're in pretty good shape. Looks like we got from the underneath good joints. And we'll get going on the next piece. Okay, I've got the uh, veneer taped up. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue the veneer to the substrate for the uh, bottom platform. I've drawn a 20 inch diameter circle to give me an idea where the glue goes. And I'm just going to slightly rough up the plywood surface to help give the glue a little bit better tooth to bond to. Since this particular plywood is very smooth. Also, if there happens to be a little bump of something, I'll be removing that. Because that bump might telegraph up through the the surface. As a matter of fact, this might be a good time to tell you that on the other side, which is going to be the top, there was actually a little pullout of the upper layer of veneer on the plywood. So I took some uh, quick wood uh, epoxy filler and just filled in that little, and then I'll sand it off later, and that way I won't have a depression that could then telegraph through the veneer. You have to have a very smooth substrate when you're using these these thin veneers. I'm going to be using a product called Heat Lock. It's an iron-on veneer adhesive. I get it from uh, veneersupplies.com and uh, what you do is you put this on, you, you brush it on with a decent layer and then you, uh, you let it dry until it's no longer tacky. At that point you can line up your veneers with your substrate and then you iron it on with a clothes iron. You may have seen me use that technique on the desktop for the executive desk. Now in order to center the veneer properly, I've made a little depression with a, with a marking awl. And I've also uh, put a little hole in the very center of the, of the veneer that I can put a, a, a small brad through. And then I can find the center and that way the veneer will be centered on the piece. Now the glue on the substrate and on the veneer is dry to the touch. It has kind of a little bit of a glossy look to it. I put a brad through the center of the veneer to help me mark where the center should go on the substrate. I'll just line up that brad with a little indent I made in the center of the substrate. And then I want to line up my veneers so that they, the axis are the same on both sides, top and bottom. Okay, so that's relatively in place. Now the first thing I'll do is I'll just touch the center and get that set in place. I'm using an iron on medium high heat. Okay, now that that is set, what I'll do is I'll just use the tip to do the four, uh, you know, the north, south, east, and west. Get that in place. And then I will work on the rest of this that you can see gets slightly buckled when you put the glue on. 
You've got to get that buckle out slowly. Okay, now I want to slowly iron the four quadrants. The iron is going to somewhat shrink the veneer. Take some of the you know the buckling out of it, it'll eventually be smooth. I'm trying to evenly heat a quadrant. If you watch the video of making the executive desk, I use this technique on a large scale on a, a desk that was essentially four feet by seven feet. And it works very well. It enables you to get a handle on veneering some of this complex tape ups instead of using a you know a vacuum bag where you don't have much control after it's in the bag. You know, if it slides around a little bit, whatever, or buckles a little bit, there's nothing much you can do about it. But with this technique. You're able to get it just like you want. Yeah, that quadrant's nice and smooth now. I'll just do that to all four quadrants. And uh, now I'm I'm softening the veneer uh, by uh, brushing on some uh, veneer softener, and uh, I brushed it on. I've got some paper towels here that I will then use to sandwich these, keeping them all in order. By the way, the reason I do this on the curly maple is because the grain is very wavy, and uh, when you veneer this, uh, that's a it makes a pronounced roughness on the surface. I can help uh, relieve the strain, the stress a little bit, flatten that out a little bit so that the finished surface will be a little smoother uh, and uh, you'll still pick up the the figure you know visually but it'll feel smoother so uh, I could let this dry naturally but I always like to press it a little bit with a hot iron uh, to help uh, speed up the drying and also help take out some of the some of the curl or some of the waviness I should say not the not the curl you want to see the curl so I set this on a medium heat. I'll just go ahead and iron the pieces. And then I'll still have to let them dry between sheets of, of paper towel. But the finished product, I think, is going to be a little smoother. Well, the, uh, the way that I'm going to clamp down the uh, center veneer in the middle of the veneer top uh, so that I can cut it in place uh, is to make a guide a block that's going to be an 8 inch diameter circle it'll also be a clamping block so I've taken my auxiliary table for my bandsaw and I've drilled a hole for a 3 8 inch dowel 4 inches away from the blade and the idea is I'll spin this this uh, piece of particle board on there, and that will uh, that will enable me to uh, have a nice even. Surface. So I've taken the walnut disc and I have taped it with blue tape to the uh, fiddleback maple disc, and I've centered it. <clears throat> Took a little time to. Try to line it up as, as best as I can. And, uh, and now what I need to do is take my template and center that and clamp it down with a strong back and some clamps. Then take a utility knife, a sharp utility knife, and cut through both layers of veneer all the way around. And that will make it so that the center disc of walnut fits exactly inside 
the matching hole in the fiddleback maple. Now I've got a waster board underneath here so I don't cut into my bench and so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, line up the strong back. I'm using a center marking punch to fit into a little indentation I made in the center of the veneer so I know that I've got this center because that's really important. Place the strong back. So the strong back's in place, clamped on both ends to the to the, the table. The disc is very solid. I'm checking my lineup on the pencil lines I had made. Things are looking good. I put a brand new sharp blade in my utility knife. Okay, at this point I'm going to have to take the strong back off and finish up these cuts just holding the template. Let me make sure that I've cut fully through the fiddle back. And I have. And here we are. Now all I have to do is tape these up. into one veneer package and we'll be ready to glue this in place. Now just to make sure I get this disc lined up as perfectly as possible, I'm, I've actually flipped this piece over and I'm just using some temporary taping on the bottom, which I'll remove later, but I can see the alignment on the bottom. I can see where the joints are can't see that on the top because the veneer tape is in the way. So I'll just give this a temporary taping just so I know everything is perfect. Flip it over, do the veneer taping. Flip it over again, remove the green tape. that sit for just a few minutes and then flip it over, take the green tape off, check our alignment again. To remove the tape I just use water to saturate the, the tape and then peel it off. You can also sand off the tape. I'm always worried about sanding through the veneer. Take something like a uh, credit card to just help me peel up the the old tape.
Here we go, here's the finished product. Everything's glued down, tape's all been scraped off, we're relatively smooth. Uh, next step, I'll sand this, and then I'll be cutting the uh, circle, uh, and then we'll start the edge banding.